Um, I'm going to start with Karen Morledge. Karen, nice to see you. Do you want to unmute and give us a quick, quick intro to who you are and where you're from? Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's so lovely to see everyone. Um, I'm Karen Morledge. Um, I am a PR consultant, but I also have um, two other businesses, one of which is a holiday home in St Audrey's Bay. So um, with the current lockdown, I'm really keen to try and um, establish, you know, do's and don'ts and um, hopefully get things moving in the right direction again. So really looking forward to hearing from everyone today. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, Hospitality Assured, I'm sorry, I haven't got a name, um, and I'm, I'm not that up to speed on, the, on our guest list, I'm sorry. No problem at all. My name's Max Lawrence, um, and I'm here with two hats on, again, like uh, Karen, um, from the Institute of Hospitality and also Visit Exmoor. Lovely, thanks Max. Um, Keith, good to see you. Hey, uh, how's it going? Um, Keith from Compass Video. I'm here. I uh, have many clients in the southwest in the tourism and hospitality industry. I'm currently doing something for Sheffield Cider. They've just messaged me this morning very quickly to do something for them. Uh, I make videos, animations. Uh, I also deliver training. So um, if you're interested in learning how to make your own content, I teach people how to make stuff with uh, mobile phones. Uh, in the hospitality sector is particularly useful for your Google My Business profile so that people can uh, see a bit more about you and what you're up to and if you want to find out more about that kind of thing do get in touch. Excellent thank you Keith and Keith has done a, a workshop for us on that and it was very useful so thank you very much. Uh, I'll come to Ronan next. Hi I'm Ronan Hunter I'm the general manager at the Castle at Taunton I'm currently locked down but trying to sort of future plan as, uh, as we've got a bit of an opportunity to do that now and hopefully get ready to reopen in December if possible. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much. Emma. Hi, morning everyone. So I am now at the IBIS Bridgewater. So I we open in February next year, all being well. So um, trying, well, just hopped on this very just found about it this morning um, just to start networking again and just to see how we can all support each other in the hospitality industry because it's been pretty dire this year. Yeah, there's an understatement. <laughs> lovely yeah. to see all the familiar faces again. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Emma. Sarah, okay. good to see you. Morning. Um, I'm Sarah Berry from Simply Sig. Um, we're a sales and marketing agency based just outside of Wellington and just again here to, to find out how everyone's doing really and how we can support each other. Um, also have my IOH hat on um, and just to let people know that there's also a hoteliers forum that um, goes on fortnightly. If anyone wants any more information, please let me know. Thanks, Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Jack. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Jack. Um, I work for Workwear Pro Direct, which was formerly ID Identity UK. Um, we are a new e-commerce uh, workwear site, hopefully to launch in the new year or towards the end of December, depending on how everything goes. Um, we're going to be launching with a new uh, loyalty scheme called Workwear Plus, where new members will be able to sign up to our website and gain points with each purchase, which will then be redeemable against future purchases and so on and so forth. Um, and we'll be able to provide workwear for all sectors and and a range of decorations as well. So we'll be able to do embroidery, screen print, digital print, whatever it might be for your workwear and um, signage needs as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Jack. Um, Charles, I'll come to you next, please. Thank you, Alistair. Um, well, uh, I've been uh, editor of What's on Somerset, which is a bit like a what, uh, chocolate fire guide, really, at the moment, um, in the sense that uh, uh, events that I had thought for the first quarter of next year just aren't going to happen. So I don't think we'll be publishing that before the summer or even possibly the autumn. Um, so I'm spending the rest of my time on Visit Somerset, which again is a changing landscape one minute you think halloween might work then you think christmas might work then you think well we'll wait till easter oh maybe february half term will work and still everything still is really up in the air so trying to mm -hmm. convey our clients in the best possible way into 2021 at which point hopefully they'll be able to get their margins coming in and make some money fingers crossed thank you very much siobhan sorry <laughs> um 
I, uh, it says I'm Sunflower Social Media on the screen, which I am. Um, I've kind of got more than one hat. Sunflower Social Media, I work for tourism and hospitality businesses. And um, I work for quite a few that shut in March and haven't reopened, basically. But, you know, some that we're still trying to support. Um, and, you know, as Giles has just said, it's, it's almost impossible to know what to do. Uh, I also work for the Tourism Management Institute. I'm a director of the Tourism Management Institute. And um, so I'm doing a lot of lobbying with that hat on and trying to find out what, you know, people would like, what businesses want to see and want what passed on to the government. Um, and then I was working on the, the Tourism Awards, the Southwest Tourism Awards, um, uh, with another hat. And that's kind of now trying to work out the best way to move things online and digital and working, you know, with businesses to sort of explore the best ways to move everything online. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Francine. Hi, I'm Francine Lee and um, I make preserves, Bumbley's preserves and uh, chilli products for my husband, the chilies. Um, it just like so Taunton and Creech St Michael. I feel a bit of a fraud actually because I, I kind of have been doing okay. Um, it's been very tricky getting supplies um, but um, and obviously I've lost a lot of all my events and everything have been cancelled so my cash flow is uh, nil and void um, but um, I've actually managed to pick up a couple of new stockists and it's been more online everything's been online now so yeah absolutely yeah adapting to the new yeah yeah I hesitate to say the new normal because I don't like that but to, <laughs> to the changing conditions uh, Trish um, hi, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Trish Caller. I also wear many hats, uh, but particularly for this um, for this forum, um, I guess I go to the one that's on ice at the moment, which is Seniors PR and Events, um, specialising in stand-up comedy and entertainment across um, Somerset. I work with various theatres um, who are really, really struggling at the moment um, and various other venues, breweries, pubs, um, leisure centres um, all across Somerset. Um, and I'm just here, hopefully, to hear some good news from um, from Steve and Joe um, about potential ways back uh, back into business, back out to seeing people, hugging people, laughing with people, and just finding our way um, out of the gloom. Really. So, if anyone yeah. lives in a in a remote area of Somerset and they want some stand up comedy, um, drop me a line. I'm hoping to get some shows running up. Um, probably from March or April. I think I'm not even going to try anything before before the spring. Yeah. Okay. Fine. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to another lipstick mark on my forehead from you at some point. So <laughs> good to see you, uh, Rob. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm from Stone Artists and Pizza. Um, hello, everyone. It's great to see you all. Um, it, I've, I've, like everyone else has said, this year the whole um, the whole event, uh, all my events have been cancelled. We are a mobile pizza and we do weddings and and parties and private. Uh, festivals, markets, everything's been cancelled. Um, in response, we uh, decided to launch a range of DIY pizza kits so that you can literally take them at home and you can make them yourself uh, just to try and sort of respond to what we're doing. And um, it's just, it's really nice to be on here and kind of like one of the other, other delegates said to kind of start networking again, it's fantastic. Excellent, great to have you with us. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and Hugh, I haven't got um, any vision, but hopefully you can hear us. Sorry, you wouldn't. We're in the middle of a race day today, hence why I was a little, a little backwards as to whether I could join you. But yeah, we've got a race day today. But um, yeah, uh, Hugh Williams, Wincanton and Race Course. Um, yeah, it's been a difficult year. We haven't from um, March. We hadn't raced all summer, but we're not due to. The big disappointment for the summer was that we had to cancel a concert um, in July. We have we are racing behind closed doors at the moment with just a few owners. But in essence, that is a long way short of where we would average two and a half thousand people for race per race fixture every other week. And we've had our big day um, behind closed doors last a week ago, Saturday, when we would have expected four and a half, five thousand on site. And we're not very hopeful about Boxing Day, um, much like Trish, actually. You know, gut feeling says we'll be lucky to get crowds back much before next March. But uh, it's tough uh, and we're not on the edge of a conurbation where we can rely on non-race day business either. So um, it is tighten the belts and hang on in there at present. Mm, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, right, 
Well, we've got two speakers today. Uh, we've got Joe Rocket from Bright, who's going to speak after Steve Ashworth. So uh, rather than come to you both, I'm going to um, come to Steve. I would say if you can just mute yourselves, uh, if you're not already, I think most people have kind of got got the um, <laughs> got the hack. You know the so, rules, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're starting to come to terms with this now, aren't we? So I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'll hand over to Steve Ashworth. Steve is uh, one of the directors of PKF Francis Clark. Um, he's got a lot of links with the hospitality and catering sector. So um, over to Steve. Morning, everyone. Sorry, I paused then. I don't know why I, why I paused for a second. I had silence. I think it was waiting just for the, uh, the slides to come up. Morning, everyone. Great to see so many, many f uh, familiar faces. Um, anytime Trish wants a hug, we can meet in the street just around the corner and have a virtual hug if you want. Uh, I think we only live about 300, 400 yards apart, don't we, Trish? Um, so it's good to see everybody else as well. Um, I probably, uh, a bit like was said um, earlier, I'm going to state the obvious, I think, with a, uh, a few things and that. So first slide, um, just to go with. Oh, I should have properly introduced myself just before first slide. Um, I work for, as it shows, PKF Francis Clark, um, who are accountants, if anybody doesn't know that. Um, that is a very, seems to be a very small part of my day-to-day -day job uh, doing accountancy services. Um, I specialize as an employment tax specialist so I have lived uh, the last uh, eight, nine months, whatever it is now, through the job retention scheme, furloughing and its various incarnations. But I spend an awful, awful lot of my time uh, doing too many things to mention this morning um, with hospitality um, in particular, uh, restaurants and sort of hotels and the likes um just helping and supporting to be honest outside both in my day job because uh, we have a number of food and drink clients but also outside of my day job as well um but i can always talk to anybody who wants to know a little bit more about some of the things i get involved with those who don't already know but uh next slide alistair please um i thought as i've already said i thought i'd just start with the blindingly obvious and uh, put a few point together just to talk around but uh, you know as it says um, the hospitality sector and I'm including in that sorry just leisure industry and tourism and I know we have a group who are represented today so apologies for just calling it the hospitality sector I know we're wider than that but I think for for all of you, it is my sweeping understatement of uh, it's been a roller coaster of a year, uh, to say the least. Um, from sort of, um, it's been like, um, you know, open up, shut down, open up, shut down. It's, it's gone all the way through that from sort of a little bit of hope um, leading up in the first half of the summer uh, to some stage return to uh, that horrible phrase again of normality and whatever normality is now. But, um, you know, it has been difficult. The industry, the sector is resilient. I mean, it makes me so proud to actually work in this sector because what you all do, you keep getting a kick in. Um, perhaps more than some of the other sectors and everything uh, out there, um, but you bounce back. But there's only so many times you can bounce back and, you know, the inevitable thing is at some point, you know, you do all lose that bounce and it just gets to that point of no return. And, and we have lost, you know, too many good businesses already uh, just, you know, just because of everything that's going on. Um, um, I mentioned Rishi's Eat Out to help out. It's It's been a plus, you know, there's been lots of positives to that. There was in the lead up. Uh, there's been negatives and that was more important. There was a big psychological thing around Eat Out to help out. A lot of people, their only focus on it was, oh, well, it's to get out people out into restaurants and uh, hotels and cafes and pubs and the likes. Um, but there was more to it than that when you think about it because it was to get confidence back into the general public it was to try and get people out it was a scheme okay great it involved eating it provided a discount but that was to give the kickstart many of you you know provide into um you know into restaurants and into service from that point of view so it kick-started the whole thing as well as giving some some hint of recovery and that out there it has also been blamed for a lot of where we are now but you know i mean i know 
you know, from spending a lot of time in hotels and restaurants, there is nowhere better uh, from a point of view of, you know, sort of cleanliness and following the rules and you've done everything and more of what's been asked for you. But, you know, it's still it's still there. But has this momentum continued? You know, Eat Out to Help Out already seems quite a while ago. Um, I think it peaked and everyone took advantage of it. Um, and it then sort of changed. So we've gone through, you know, if you had a timeline in front of you, it's gone through the sort of the change in people's habits um, and customer demand. We went through sort of people eating at home, uh, being in complete lockdown to then be eat out to help out and people were desperate or some people not everybody uh, were desperate just to get out of their front doors and get back out there um, it gave an opportunity for people to get out just maybe you know some events but events have been the hardest hit of anybody really and just hasn't had that opportunity to get back up and running in uh, in the normal format but you know, has that momentum carried on? Or, you know, we've had this now lockdown again, uh, the second lockdown um, for England. I mean, I'm, my focus is England. I appreciate uh, you may have businesses in Wales and Scotland or do business in those other countries as well. But, um, you know, it, it's difficult to tell at the moment. Um, I think some of the momentum has now died down. Um, there's a focus towards Christmas and certainly, you know, I think consumer demand and habits. I'm not finding, I'm not hearing stories of um, great successes on changing the way people sort of supply you know doing the boxes at home uh, food boxes or the online demand perhaps as there was originally um but i do still think in the southwest this is still one of the strongest performers and as i started this slide by saying how resilient um you all are um i think that will come back it, it you know that it will still carry on as being for the Southwest one of the strongest sectors that we have. And people need to recognize that. Um, and, you know, and people out there need to see, you know, how important the whole of the food, drink, hospitality, leisure industry, tourism industry is for the Southwest. And uh, um, I'm hopeful, <laughs> as everybody is, that come. January, uh, maybe even you know coming up to Christmas, there will be you know we will see this uh, start to start to shine again as it was previously. Um, next slide, please, Alistair. So, what are some of the things um, just to focus on and everything? Uh, I, I said at the beginning that uh, CJRS, the job retention scheme, furlough, if you prefer to call it that scheme, we're now in version three. I promise you, it seems like a version 50 or 60, because um, uh, I think it's, you know, you can actually go within each of the versions which have come out. There's been, you know, version 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 already in the last weeks it came in with little tweaks here and there for some it was a lifeline if you add it in with the all the other grants the loans the funding which i'm not a specialist in i've got an awareness but i'm not a specialist in all the the other areas of grants and funding and that mainly because cjrs takes up all my time but you know there is a lifeline and it did it has helped businesses undoubtedly um and version three you know, we were going down through, you know, job retention scheme no more. It was going to the JSS scheme, um, which was going to be, you know, not as good a scheme, you know, for money and that it provided. So back on the 80%, it's, it's there uh, to help, hope, well, to, at least till the end of January. It will carry on till March, but it might change in the end of January we might have a different version of this um, come February and March and everything but the lockdown obviously isn't helping at the moment uh, in any way whatsoever uh, the big thing with the lockdown as I've been talking to many businesses is, uh, has been but two weeks ago we're just facing what is a lockdown brought let's understand it what can we do what can't we do and I said to so many businesses then the problem will be in two weeks time we'll be approaching the cliff edge and when you think about it 
we're now less than two weeks away well two weeks away today to the third of december and the reopening after lockdown and we don't know what it'll look like um i don't know when the government's going to announce that there was talk last night about what will christmas mean this year um will there be some hope um for what's actually coming to it um there were some little changes and everything, uh, just turning that on the head. Initially, the 10 p.m. closure for a lot, for pubs, restaurants, hotels, everything um, was was a rug pulled from underneath everybody again because uh, 10 p.m. doesn't really mean 10 p.m. Yes, that's the closure, but that took away so much trade in the lead up to 10 p.m. Um, and as we've done some takeaways and everything else, the first bit was that uh, I've said beer in there, but uh, it was uh, the fact that um, alcohol sales for takeaway wasn't going to be allowed, but then there was a U-turn and some alcohol sales as takeaway were allowed and some businesses have been able to adapt and change and offer that, um, which is quite key to how, how the businesses and everything operate. I've already just said about the 3rd of December. The 2nd of December is, is the last day of lockdown. As I understand it, it's midnight, uh, effectively one minute past midnight. The 3rd of December, we come out of lockdown. Uh, some people were thinking it was the 2nd they could reopen, but it's the 3rd, as I understand it. Um, but we don't know. You know, as I said already, we don't know what we're going to go into. Are we going to go into this tiered system? Are we all going to be put into tier two? Uh, is there going to be some other tiered systems? How is this actually going to work and look? Um, and we don't know. And we need more information on that. Just talking about some of the other things which are going out um, uh, locally, you may have seen if anyone who's on social media, uh, one of uh, my good friends was trying to promote takeout to help out as a new catchphrase because, um, um, you know, lots of restaurants and hotels are all still open. Um, offering some kind of takeout service, a little play on the eat out to help out. So let's all get behind them and take out as a firm. Uh, we started up the Share a Smile campaign, which was for the whole of the sector, the hospitality sector, the leisure, the tourism, for people to get out and about, share a picture, let's do some promotion. Um, we've brought some vouchers and everything from various places to give a little bit of support. Um, we've run that campaign outside of francis clark it's under share a smile but it it is francis clark who's behind it and it's had a lot of momentum just to try and support find ways of supporting the industry and uh, <coughs> excuse me hospitality action as well as run, run many many campaigns and that again for the sector so so important because this isn't just about financial and it isn't just about you know how people are, are hitting the pocket as a business i mean it's obviously it's a major 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 area is that uh, but the knock-on effect is people's mental well-being their health um and running a business as you all know um is no easy thing and it and it affects this thing up here uh and you know sometimes people don't know where to go uh and what to do and hospitality action has been helping out in that way um we've already from some of your introductions you know people who move a business you know if you can find a new way of operating your business you know events have not been there we're all used to online and everything now but you know diversify that business offering um you know and they've used the time to change the business direction the amount of businesses i've spoken to who've, who've found new solutions and they've got no intention of of stopping that offering going forward and that some thought you know we'll never offer a takeaway now they actually see it as vital to the business and added value to what they do so um you know we'll we'll see you know if um, i wish i was cr as creative and as clever as many of you are listening today and everything just to think about new ideas and ways to do things so credit to you all for for those who have done that and you might need to think again and look at new opportunities as well that spring out of this so just to finish off um i think people if we can get into the new year and we can be open um you know, literally open in many ways. I think people will look for a new year staycation. 
Um, I think, you know, once people have got Christmas and it's likely to be madder than ever Christmas this year, I think people might want to get out and away and go for that winter break. And, you know, and we're an ideal part of a country for a winter break. I mean, I have to say, you know, come to Somerset, Devon, Cornwall, there's nowhere better in the winter and everything. So uh, I'm prepared to lose a bit of a quietness that some of these areas may have, as so long as everyone bides by the rules and everything that I needed but let's go on for that staycation and that. Um, there is the travel ban at the moment there is an expectation that uh, there will be three million more people around over Christmas so there's a there's an offering from that point of view if we're around and just to sort of be finishing off um, I think we all need a hug. <laughs> Trish again mentioned this earlier and a few of you mentioned it and everything this this wellness this comfort um, you know, people will be changing their diets and maybe looking at new healthy plant-based ways of doing things and maybe that will bring opportunities as well. But I think we certainly do all need a, a hug and uh, more than just a virtual hug these days. But hopefully the government will give one more boost or maybe one more boost and actually help the industry again because I think January, February, March could be quite difficult and financially um, we could do with some you know a winter eat out scheme or what, whatever way they look to fund it just to just to help the whole industry and sector. That's probably me overrun slightly but uh, that's it thank you very much. <coughs> Sorry, I was muted. I was going Classic. to say back to you, Alistair. But... Classic. <laughs> I, was, I was yabbering away. I said some really interesting stuff and I was muted. Um, <laughs> thank you, Steve. Um, I'm going to move quite swiftly on to, to Joe. Um, I, I'm mindful that we need some time at the end for questions. I'm sure we've all got questions. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm going to hand over to Joe from Bright Productions. Uh, over to you, Joe. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Sorry, clearing the throat to start off with. Uh, yes, so um, I have been operating a production company based out of Taunton now for, well, I've been with the company now 20 years, uh, and we deal with production across all sectors of live performance events, corporate hospitality and so on. Uh, so that can be anything from educational, uh, converting theatres through to amateur dramatics to touring shows, um, arena transformations, uh, and obviously festivals. Um, as Hugh pointed out, I think it was Hugh, um, from a race course point of view, absolutely nothing. We, we uh, historically have done seasons and seasons of festival style um, tribute performances on race days. Uh, I, have a, I have a separate interest in that I'm quite the, uh, the, the race person as well, so horse wise. Uh, so it's been quiet on both fronts from me. But generally across the board, so Bright have uh, historically dealt with lighting and stage production as a um, as, a, as a key element of, of the, the business itself. What we've had to do since March, uh, when I actually had more hair, because it's been a bit like that, uh, is that we have looked at the infrastructure that we have uh, and how we can put that into uh, venues um, on a short, medium and long term basis, predominantly into the streaming sector. Uh, I'm actually sat today in the Macmillan Theatre, of which uh, we've been working with them now for the last four or five months over developing uh, a streaming service which was originally a, a free service um, that, to try and get a coup around streaming because everyone's quite nervous about streaming about how that would be interactive with with clients um, with the paying audience if it's a pay to view which we've done more recently uh, and it's using the same technical infrastructure that we have lighting wise and video wise to put into an environment which is good enough for TV uh, we'll call it the anti deck effect for one of a better description um, the, the, the thing with streaming is that it's more personal than video conferencing. You can make it more intimate, you can make it more engaging purely by camera work. So uh, for example, it's the old camera one, camera two, back to main and center. You don't have that ability really to engage with your audience if you're on a fixed camera. So we've pulled in our camera stocks, our video wall stocks, our lighting, uh, and put that into a package where people are now seeing the benefit to uh, having things up on online and more engaging that's on product placement that's on a style a continuity of, of previous events where you would have people in the room uh, but now more so it needs to be um, 
put forward to everybody that they can still maintain a particular level of production without it having to be, in this case, a black curtain or a nice bookshelf or what have you. You can still make a big event online without um, without losing the quality of service that you would have if you had people in the room. Hybrid events suddenly became a thing when we were allowed to have people in the room with social distancing. Now, that's great. It does mean that uh, with your event, you have to have people that can present well. So they have to be able to talk and engage with people in the room and on camera, which is a very difficult thing for some people. Uh, Trish, um, we've discussed previously about how comedians find that hard because they need to bounce off of things that are in the room. They need that feedback. With streaming, it's very difficult. You get to an end of a song if you don't have um, some form of uh, kind of per a personality that would bounce down the camera lens. It makes it very awkward and very silent. So you do have that kind of the, the tumbleweed moment. Technically, though, it's very straightforward. And in terms of uh, money saving, um, it is great because you have a reduced infrastructure. So on a production level, you can still put out your product, save money, and from a client's point of view, have an exponential reach. Uh, I'm going to use an example. We did a tribute for Kate Bush maybe three weeks ago. Normally, they would sell 300 tickets in-house. They sold a 1,000 online at £10 a time. Now, they only had the theatre for a four-hour call. So on a financial level, it was the return on their time against uh, the infrastructure and crewing, etc., was much, much more profitable. So as a positive, you can turn things around as, it, well, as much as we're missing our audiences on a financial level. Uh, I think, Francine, you said you felt a bit guilty that you, were, you weren't doing too badly. Actually, I, I, I kind of I understand that because uh, technically, as a company, we haven't done too badly in redesigning our, our working systems to move everything straight to online. The other end of when we move on to, um, to post the new normal, which everyone hates, po post this, uh, is that people are worried that it's going to lose momentum. Actually, it's an extra bolt on it. It's a, it's, it's a bonus. So we can still implement and use the same equipment, same crewing, uh, same type of connections post, the, uh, post the, the new normal as an extra revenue stream. We all want people back in the room. We all want people to, to, uh, to watch shows because uh, it is the most engaging way. People need some form of, um, of relaxation time, some out of normal lifestyle time by moving into these environments. However, it does add an extra income stream should you be able to piece that together. Now, with the, um, the race course days, for example, uh, a lot of those events we can stream into. So when you can have a reduced audience number, you are still able to put on productions. Now, uh, as a holiday park, for example, um, at Christmas, they are uh, encouraged to discourage dancing, singing or other. So using the Macmillan, putting a band on for a Christmas thing if, when, if, if and when they can open um, and for New Year, for example, what we're looking at doing is we're selling, in essence, packages to chains of people, um, whether that's holiday homes or whether that's holiday parks, generally quite, quite well-known holiday parks, where they will invest by us putting our production here and streaming it to them to put on in their entertainment areas um, a bit like Butlins in the main tent and so on and so on. So the reach on a, on a streaming level is great. It does have longevity in it. Um, and in regards to kind of the, um, the financial end, it can be split across a number of people. So it doesn't actually cost as much as you would think to then still be able to put on something that would be of, um, of interest to the people on your site and so on and so on. Um, so over overall, you you will. I try, it's very difficult to explain. So uh, from an engaging point of view, as we're all doing now, Jen, I can see you smiling down the camera. Laura, the same as well. Alistair, and so on. When you have people watching, it's very difficult to um, to gauge where they are engaging in the content. So, for example, with the video wall and so on, and play and playing with video wall you can have ABBA the live stream, but it's not the same feeling when you're sat in a holiday park home and you want to get up and dance. It's 
you, you have to have somebody to present that. So, Alistair, for example, you like to talk to the camera. Uh, you would have to have somebody in that room to want to talk to somebody in a holiday park or an MC still. You really need to look at who your demographics are. The one, one of the biggest issues we've had so far is the demographic older age of them understanding technology. So if people want to buy an e-ticket, it's very difficult to, uh, to get them to understand how to use the technology when they're used to coming into a theatre because that's what they, uh, that they'll come down, sit down, enjoy their show without any complexity. Whereas younger people are great because they do have direct access to every device um, under the sun and are willing to, with a very small ticket price, invest in their time. They will sit at home, they will enjoy it. They might sit in a van and watch it, for example, <laughs> where they have great signal. You know, it, it, the, the, the putting it online is with your reach is great, but for specific demographics that's the that's the bit we struggled with is getting um, artists that would like to perform without an expectance of a particular price tag overall though so the the technology hasn't really changed from a, from a going back to the company starting point of view it hasn't really changed what we have we're very fortunate that leading up to the lockdown and uh, lockdown or one that is there was a huge shift in the industry to try and save money within theater by moving it to um, video production rather than expensive stage sets it was cheaper to uh, to tour video than it was to tour four or five arctics worth of Les Mis or Miss Saigon sets all of which I absolutely adore and I am very much a musical theatre boy um, <laughs> so but the video thing was great because the minute that we couldn't do our theatre shows we had a stock load that we could move straight into another area of work in this case obviously moving into the live stream sector now that applies to temporary solutions as well for if you were running a hotel for example castle hotel as a prime example if you wanted to yes you could use a 50 inch tv screen on the wall however it might add some uh, some more clout if you put it into a much more cinema style i know uh, from previous i think we've done a pre uh, a, a promo shoot at the castle before and i think you've got a projection screen up in one of your um ballrooms or something similar upstairs if I remember rightly it's going back a few years ago now um, so the technology that we can do we can install it here we can install it with you and as a package you can then have the same the same feel as if you were sat inside the theatre same level of production um, and all of it doesn't matter where you are in the country you can still see something that's in Somerset obviously if you're in Edinburgh and have exactly the same interaction with that technology so overall yes yeah, so in terms of equipment we we've been very fortunate i think is the best way of putting it uh and as a secondary income stream we uh have looked at our um, our sales and what we would normally install product like products and what have you for for theater renovations and uh and temporary installations and unbelievably i'm not quite sure what people do with cable and connectors I mean, I'm pretty certain there's three million caravan hookup kits floating around somewhere uh, in the Midlands or wherever at the present moment from the number of connections we've sent out. So we've looked at what we would normally use ourselves and thought, well, let's put that online. Uh, and we started our online uh, uh, electrical store, for want of a better description, which in turn has made, uh, has, has thankfully uh, fed back some funds, which meant we could, we could invest in more video technology purely for streaming the difference in the streaming sector at the present moment is level of quality so there's always someone that will do something out of their front room or out of a garage or um, out of the shed at the bottom of the garden which is great but if you are of a brand nature where uh, i'm going to use the chamber of commerce awards actually if you don't mind jen as an example the chamber I'm going to put down as a bit of a streaming service um, style of progression. Years ago, we started back at the cricket club, which was great. And at the time, um, was the, the, the level of production on that was a very simple stage, a, a very basic screen. And people would um, and did enjoy that evening very much. If you look over the last 10 years, I think now, Jen, is it nearly a decade? 
been a while anyway. Uh, we're now up to a point where we've gone to sports centers we, uh, and, and, and rebuilt them from scratch and so on and so on. Now this year will be very different, or 21 will be very different, because we are going to do the streaming idea. Hopefully, Alistair, we'll talk about that later. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so what will be very interesting is to see how people engage in that. Now, if you roll that model out from where we are used to having a room full of people, having wonderful dinner and some drinks and what have you from a hospitality point of view, is that the engaging with the audience will be very different by their um, streaming into their relevant businesses. This comes back to another issue actually, whilst I'm thinking about it, is your personal infrastructure. Streaming is great, providing you have a decent internet connection. And you do have to look at what your infrastructure is to support it on a high level nature. Uh, we did a production recently, which wasn't shouted about. It's amazing what actually happens in Somerset and people don't really know about it. Uh, so we were working for the MGM in Las Vegas about three or four weeks ago for Penn and Teller. Uh, and the ability to, to be able to do that live stream, we were filming magicians for their, for their TV show, Foolish. That would never have happened had we not developed this studio in the Macmillan Theatre. Uh, they, they found us online. We did, uh, we, we, put, we put the infrastructure together and we transmitted from the UK to America for their American TV show, which is fab. The infrastructure for doing that was basically three cameras and some eye candy lighting. We'll call it eye candy um, because everything on TV is different. You have, nothing is the same as when you are trying to make people feel engage or something in a room uh, the musical theater effect someone singing a power ballad they stand in a spotlight it's very moody you don't get that on online streaming it doesn't portray well so you need to look at your when you're looking at your product for um for whether you are it's a sales product or whether you're doing an award ceremony or um, a TV presentation, you need to think about how you want that to come across. And we then change our design content to suit you technology wise. So if it's a product placement on a, on a lectern or a table, we will like that very differently. And that's how we've had to adjust is that from a theatre background, it's very difficult to not, not to want to have the jazz hands and the twinkly lights because it doesn't come across on camera so we've had to look at all of our technical infrastructure to say well actually it's all well and good throwing 500 lights at something but you don't need to you don't have to have the outlay for that you don't need to have all of this equipment in place it it can be used very very differently and very much more simply to get your um, your desired effect over one thing that i'll go back to from a hue point of view you mentioned about the races uh, and the, the festivals one thing locally that we've really struggled with over lockdown one was the um, was the nervousness of people? It's I, I can absolutely see that streaming will carry on. I think hybrid will be more popular. I think the streaming only will come to an end reasonably quickly once we can get people back into a room. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't do both. The issue that we had is is confidence from people. It's the it's the want for, of people to go out and have an experience. They're nervous. They 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 get the um, the festival circuit. I genuinely don't believe, as we as we currently see it, will come back anywhere near July, maybe August of next year. That's that's our general feeling, because it will be the confidence of people wanting to go. There'll be a big surge, I expect, of people wanting to go out and do something, but it will be restrictions that hold that up. Mm. Okay. Um, and from uh, from a, a festival slash entertainment or, or concert point of view. Sorry, thanks, Jen. I appreciate I'm waffling. Sorry, I, I just saw a, a watch then. Thanks, Jen. You know, I did say that I'm a, I like to talk. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, is that from a festival point of view, um, we are worried only because it's the turnaround time post being able to um, get things back up online. Organising something like that with the people control in place is going to be very difficult. However, there are definitely models that we can work with on a social distancing level. Council-wise in Somerset, it's a, it will be a sore subject, and I'm glad there's not many people that probably are on that board. Somerset is the only district in the whole of the Southwest who refuse to look at any event management plans over the first lockdown out of the entire country. And out of the 26 festival uh, productions we got put together, not one was granted. And that purely comes down to confidence. 
it's not the fact that we can't deliver it. There are absolutely ways about manipulating what we currently use and, and, and reusing it and, uh, and being agile in how we do that and react to things. It's going to be down to people allowing us to do that yeah. rather than it, us not being able to do that. And as a company, that's what's really frustrating because we know we can do it, we can deliver it, and we know we've moved things around and we've, and we've developed what we do uh, from just being a, a kind of a, a live to online. Um, we are able to deliver that, but it's actually restrictions that are causing us the most grief. And obviously going back into the second lockdown has not helped uh, because we had much lined up. Uh, in a hybrid way, but people don't want to necessarily just do the online streaming. They want the hybrid feeling to play to something. And so much has been pushed back until the new year. So I totally agree that yes, March would be great. Hospitality, uh, I really hope for, for all of you in the food and drink uh, industry, bits and pieces, that comes back. Sadly, I don't think that will happen for, for us on a production level, but it absolutely should do uh, when it comes to live streaming and hybrid events. So uh, I'd be absolutely uh, thrilled to talk to anybody that would like to, uh, to, to look at some of the, the, the projects we've done to date and obviously how that might be useful for them hotel-wise, racecourse-wise, venue-wise, and so on. Uh, because there's a lot we could talk through, and I know that Jen's going to be frowning at me even more in a minute for carrying on talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, going to have to stop you as well, Joe. <laughs> it's gonna... <laughs> fine. You carry on. You carry on, honestly. I, so I apologise for talking you. too much. No, no, not at all. Thank you. It's a, it's a fascinating insight into how you've managed to kind of adapt the business and what you've you've offered. Um, I would certainly agree with you that kind of confidence about physically getting people together is a big consideration that we obviously have as in some way an events management organization. Um, you know, we do 75 plus events a year. Um, you know, at what point does the confidence and the social appetite come back for people getting back into a room together? I think you'll find this there's different levels of it. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It, it, it was interesting to see the uh, the Eat Out to Help Out um, scheme was very popular, which hopefully will give us some confidence moving forward that people will be out. Um, you all got a, a sneak peek there about what we're doing with the SBAs. Uh, we haven't announced it yet. We are, we will be moving. I'm so uh, sorry. I'm oh. so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't in my notes. That wasn't in my notes. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, so uh, yeah, the uh, one of the considerations for us is whether or not we can get 400 people into uh, into a room uh, in March of next year. And in reality, we've made the decision that we can't. So we will be running a hybrid event. Uh, but keep that under your hats uh, for the moment. It should be announced within the next week or so officially. <laughs> um, uh, does anyone have any kind of burning questions that they wanted to ask? immediately I, I, I would say it's really nice for francine to be described as, as a young person adopting technology by using it in a van so well done <laughs> trish sorry you had a question um, well no i'd like to reiterate what um, what steve mentioned in his part of the speech about the um the takeout to help out mm. uh, i mean i've had some lovely takeouts from restaurants that I love going to and it is really nice to uh, to taste familiar high quality food um, such as Augustus to be able to um, have have it at home and just pretend that you're in a restaurant with people. I mean I miss the atmosphere and being with people and earwigging into other people's conversations and watching rows about to happen on the table opposite etc but we, we reenact that ourselves in the dining room so that's absolutely fine but I really like the take out to help out thing and I'm wondering whether all of us as a group could adopt that um, that mm. hashtag and also the share a smile stuff I've just shared it as a tweet so if we can all get hold of that one um, and ping it out as well and remember that laughter is the best medicine. Thank you, Trish. Um, Rob, obviously you've adapted your business to, to offer some sort of takeout offering or, or, or a pizza kit. Um, was, was takeout an option for you or was it the, and I'll ask you to unmute um, uh, to answer, but um, was that an option for you in your business? Sorry, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've got a, a mobile pizza oven, so it's a wood-fired oven which we take to on site to weddings and that kind of thing. And um, so takeout, it, it it doesn't really work because it doesn't stay hot for as long as, as we want it to. It doesn't you don't get the best out of the product. And um, we've done sort of little local events, so we've basically served pizza off our drive uh, at home. So we've literally had people. Um, we've done sort of flyers around, you know, anything to get a quick book. You know, it's one of those like, come in, come in, please, please, please. Um, but yeah, the pizza kits have been, we've been thinking about it for a little while. And um, yeah, you, you know, we're literally doing it. So we're, we're currently working with a PR company to try and get 
um, the branding up and so we can get it into sort of smaller vendors so we can get it into sort of uh, farm shops and that kind of thing, delis. Um, and that's been really interesting because it's sort of, it has driven us in some ways to kind of think outside of the box and it's now a new sort of uh, direction that we weren't necessarily expecting our business to go in. So yeah, that was great. And I, I do have to say, I absolutely love take out to help out. I think that's uh, that's a fantastic uh, hashtag, which we'll definitely be adopting. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a story of diversification and, and, and adaption across not just the hospitality top teeth back in hospitality sector, but every sector really, isn't it? Um, it's good to good to see how others are getting on. Uh, did anyone else have any, any other questions that they wanted to ask? Um, I've got one, um, yeah, Alistair. Go on. um, just really, um, probably for Giles, um, Joe, um, possibly, and maybe even Trish. Um, so we were talking about sort of en events in the area possibly not happening until maybe even sort of after the summer next year. So Glastonbury obviously is quite a big event for the area. Do you think these organisers are planning for it to happen live and then we'll have to resort to either cancelling or going streaming it um or are they planning for it not to happen because obviously these are you know a lot of these events that happen even in the taunton mm. live things and everything it, it, it's a lot of work that can't just pull together when they say yep yeah, you're okay to go <laughs> i'll let joe answer the the local one because i know that he'll have his finger on the pulse but what <laughs> i can tell you that edinburgh 2021 is already looking dodgy because the comedians and the venues in Edinburgh, they would have started planning this um, mm. as soon as the as soon as this one would have um, would have just passed. So it's not looking good for for Edinburgh and comedy in 2021. Yeah. But I'm not August, sure that, September time is it, Trish? Yeah, August. The whole of August. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've already got my hotel and flight book, so I, I don't know what what will be happening. But um, and also equally with the uh, the air shows in the area, you know, the air show pulls in a lot of. Um, tourists into Western um, and Yeovil yeah. and obviously they could be you know I'm planning um, on Force Day in Vivery Park um, on July the 3rd and we're still rocking on um, towards that one because we had it all set up for last year so we've just rolled it over by a year so I'm hoping that by July local events on a larger scale and more up close and personal will definitely be happening it's the ones that need the long run-up and preparation time which I think you're probably going to talk about Glastonbury so I'll hand back to Joe. Yeah, um, actually, um, thanks, Trish. Um, you hit the nail on the head, actually. It's preparation time. It's, the, it's all the lack of. So what we're actually trying to encourage people to do is that um, historically, obviously, you, you tend to work a year ahead of yourself. So, uh, so you're pre-booking things for the middle of next year now, if not earlier, back in July, and then again next year for the, for the 22 what we're trying to encourage people to do because they, they are loath given the financial status of, of, of many at the moment is they don't want to put down any funds in advance they don't want to secure a date because it's that commitment alone um as they found with the first lockdown this year a lot of people lost money for events that didn't happen purely because of the uh, deposits and other that they've had to put down to secure the services so what we're actually trying to do is, is encourage people to look at an, almost like the tiering system, our geographical tiering system for lockdown, is look at the, the fallback plans, A, B and C, for what you can do. Yeah. And make sure that there's a strong enough relationship there that should it need to change, it can change. So uh, uh, Limelight, for example, I know Craig very well that does the, the Taunton live stage production. Um, and uh, obviously that got pulled this year they are looking to to make sure that they have available capacity for next year if not this, the second option is that they do a reduced number of people the issue with reduced numbers of people as we know is that the the the, the revenue generated to cover those costs is not so great but the production is still expected to be the same level by the artists because the artists uh, determine or, or stipulate what they need to make sure that they get what they you know it's the old rider issue you know four, four bottles or of whiskey in the in the green room and they drink one you know they don't need four uh, <laughs> uh, but on, so that would be almost a, a fallback to, to a b and the c being making sure that there's available broadcast studios to do it the government were very clever in their wording where they where they made um made a, a comment where it had to be a labeled broadcast studio it couldn't be a theater it had to be a broadcast studio or television studio mm. uh so from from that point of view that, that that would be the third option is to make sure that there is that third contingency plan and as a tech provider 
we're making sure that we have available and, and good relationships with every stage of that, whether it be that we can throw 5,000, 10,000 people into a field and a big stage. That's great. Uh, we have a happy medium in the middle where it's caged off and uh, it's like going back to the old Taunton market, you know, with it's, with it's caged, <laughs> it's caged squares and having your sixth or sixth or how many people are allowed in that one. But, uh, but it, it is the planning. that's the issue. You're mm. absolutely right. And, um, and so next year, is going to be a taxing one because people I think will, as soon as they get given the green light, want to do something. It's whether it can be turned around in that time frame for the date that they would want to do it. Yeah, absolutely agree. And I think that's something that, you know, we, this um, move of the SBAs to um, a, a hybrid or online event shouldn't necessarily come as a surprise. I'm sure that most people would, would expect it, but it's something that we've been considering since March this year, that it might be an option, um, which is, which I think is hopefully the key to it being a success um, to keep that in mind and, and keep talking about that. Um, one thing I did want to ask the group, um, I don't know how many of you work for, for businesses that have furloughed people, um, but was everyone aware of the, the uh, withdrawal of the furlough bonus scheme? You've just, I've uh, uh, Alistair, you've taken the words out because I just asterisked it on here. Just, uh, I yeah. didn't want to finish on a negative, that was all. But, oh, we're, uh, we're not finished. <laughs> so that's all right. It's um, just, just to add to what you were saying there. But uh, yeah, the thousand pound, which businesses were sort of already business planning and expecting in February has now been postponed. So it, it is quite an important point, Alistair. So it's, it's good you brought it up again. Um, uh, for a lot of businesses who were thinking, you know, it was either going to be an amount of money we were going to use in the business or pass on to their employees or do whatever with. Um, it's quite a lot of money now not coming through, obviously, because you got a thousand pound for every employee you kept on. So, um, you know, tens of thousands for obviously a large employer, but even for a small employer, a thousand pound, if you've got one employee, is, is was quite an amount of money due to come in uh, February. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you just said postponed. Yeah. So it's postponed, not cancelled. So that thousand pounds might still be available at uh, another future date. Um, good, good choice of um, picking up on that, Trish. Um, it said that it might they would revisit it and look at an alternative incentive. Mm, okay. Uh, where does Trish <laughs> <laughs> work don't, that one out? Don't, don't bank on it. I think is the yeah. question. Keith, Keith, I know you had a question. Yeah, so um, I'm part of the Excluded UK and Forgotten Limited mm. groups. Um, there, so I'm sort of up to date in the grant things that are available as well and the rumour mills that are going round. And they're likely to tag that £1,000 onto the, if you get an apprentice now, the, what's it called? The, there's Chambers doing it. Someone said Chambers doing it. The, the Kickstart. Kickstart. That, that, yeah, if you hire one of them. So it's to sort of encourage you to actually take part in that, get more jobs because... There's going to be a lot of unemployment very soon. Um, uh, but on top of that, there, I don't know if all of you are aware of it. Um, there is another round of support things um, happening. I'll just put a link in the... Oh, I've just put it to Alistair. Whoops. Sorry, Alistair. I'll put so it I'll, I'll, I can forward it, shall I? It's all right. There we go. Um, there is another one around at the moment um, for businesses with premises, the local restrictions support grant. And then there's another one coming up for additional restrictions support grant. So... Mm. Um, if you are struggling at the moment for cash flow, there are two more support things that they didn't widely advertise. Mm. Um, and, um, but you need to go to your local councils Council. to find out. Yeah. Yeah. About. The, the, there is a pot of money that um, has been made available. But the, I think the issue that we're seeing at the moment is that the qualifying criteria are not necessarily clear at the moment. No, and they've got the old, yeah, um, <laughs> and they've got the old discretionary grant as well. The only thing I would say with any grant, um, if you see it and you think it's applicable to you, get in early. Um, a lot of them are done on a first come first serve basis, uh, which which means that the first ten hundred, however many businesses that apply, will get it rather than those that actually need it the most. So you know, if you if you feel it's applicable to you, and the other top tip and... on that is is even if you're not applicable, just apply. Let them exclude you. Don't exclude yourself. You know, don't talk yourself out of a grant. Just apply for it. You never know. You might get something. A bit mean on the public sector, giving them more work to do, but. You know, if you don't try, you don't get. Mm. Good point. 
Thank are you. the grants that you're talking about, are they just available from your local council then? Is it something that's just, you've got to go through your council for again? Yeah, so the one, um, me, I'm in Mendip, so my one's on the Mendip website, um, and then you okay. click on, and they've got two links. They haven't opened the additional re uh, restriction support grant yet, but the local restriction support grant is, and you can apply at the moment. So yep. the council that you're, you're the borough council that you're in is the one to find the details. If you search, um, like, Somerset Council discretionary grant. I think that's where they're posting it in the old place from the previous discretionary grants. Yeah, you've got each each council will in theory do their own. So Somerset West and Taunton, South Somerset, Mendip um, will 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 get involved. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, no, that's right. I think um, I think as a, a firm we produced um, a summary last week of all the councils and what they they were actually offering and who to contact. How they it's, it's in a tabulated form, so I'll I'll send that on to you, Alistair. You can share yeah, it if you. you want round. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, we'll it's just that. a useful reference point and everything, and picks up on what Keith and Matt was saying as well. Just on uh, you yeah. know, at least go for it if you think you're in with a chance. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I think we've got some support that hopefully will be coming out from the councils. Um, keep an eye on it. As I say, um, speed is of the essence on that. Yeah. Um, anybody else got anything that they want to ask? There's, sorry, there's lots of chat with regards to the carnivals and the related, everything related to that. I see a few people contributing there in the chat. Does anybody have a question or want to say anything with regards to that? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think we, just, we just all want the, the green flag for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want the whole world to go back to normal. And I hate the mm -hmm. phrase, the new normal. Mm -hmm. And I hope people will have picked up the good things that have come out of this horrible pandemic. Um, but get back to, you know, just trying to live your life normally and with people again. I don't know if anyone else is feeling that way, but I just want to, I want, I just want to be with people properly again. This is lovely. This is nice. Don't get me wrong. I love you all, but. <laughs> yeah, it's a, we're, we're social creatures, aren't we? I think the sooner that we can get back together, the better. Certainly we're missing doing physical events as well. So mm. you would, you know, fingers crossed. I don't think there's an answer at the moment, unfortunately, but. Um... Your, Christmas, your Christmas coffee morning. I'm already bereft that that's not happening. I normally I put my mother Christmas outfit and cover everyone with glitter. I know. I know I will miss it this year, Trish. Uh, we will um, be doing it on a video call now with our own coffee and mince pies. I'm sure. Why not? Do. And a fancy I dress as well. Uh, I'm yes, sure we can definitely do fancy dress. Oh, I, I think, love it. Thank you. I think that, uh, Jen, you do a, a Tuesday coffee and a catch up. So maybe it can be coffee, mince pie, and a catch up and a silly hey, jumper. We can make that happen. Sure. The infamous Tuesday coffee and a catch up. Notorious, yes. yeah. Um, <laughs> I am a bit mindful of time. Um, one thing I didn't do, and I, I apologise to, to my guys, I know that most of you know uh, Jen and I, but I haven't introduced Laura. Uh, Laura is new with us, she's been with us about a month, um, and she's uh, our event coordinator. So, um, Laura, she will say hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Have you got, have you I got think I've questions? spoken to most people, but yes. Yeah, if, you, if you've got any questions, you obviously know who we are and where, where we are now as well, and obviously I know most of you, if not all of you know Jen. Uh, so... <laughs> is that fair, Jen? I hope you put the right reasons, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No off, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> I've been around too long, that's all it is. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of things I would ask. Uh, do have a look at the Somerset Business Awards. They close on the 27th, which is next Friday. I will put in a massive plug for those. We are recognising businesses across Somerset uh, that, that are doing exemplary things. Uh, there are 14 categories, in, including a response to COVID. Um, category so you know please do have a good look at that one the more more entries and the more and, businesses and can, can I just mention better. Black Friday next week um, and for everyone mm -hmm. to keep an eye on the Castle Hotels uh, Black Friday deals which I think are coming out next week as well there should be some <laughs> good things on there you know about that do you Ronan <laughs> He does uh, now. Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one or two things we're uh, we're trying to trying to do, but we'll see what happens with it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> frantically paddling under the water and trying to have a, a calm sort of a You've just been committed to something. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, like getting like, dinner vouchers and after and afternoon tea vouchers as Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. I I am um, I bought loads last year and they were so welcomed by people as well. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, thank you. Good good top tip. I'll mute myself. All right, enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I will wrap this up then. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you to Steve uh, and thank you to Joe. Really fascinating insight into how businesses can adapt and change what they're doing with, with Bright Productions, uh, obviously moving everything online. Um, and certainly we're looking forward to, to, to moving the SBAs online with them as well. Um, and Steve, thank you very much for your input. Always valuable to, to understand you know, where we are financially, and, you know, how businesses and especially within the hospitality sector can, can look after themselves as we move forward. Fingers crossed um, we have a successful end of lockdown and we can get out again before Christmas or at Christmas or after Christmas. Let's see how it goes. Any questions at all, obviously you know where the chamber is. Um, the chat will be saved. Uh, Laura, if you can save that chat, we'll circulate that afterwards with, uh, with uh, all the details that Steve mentioned as well. Um, and we'll send you a link for the Somerset Business Awards as well, I'm sure. So thank you very much. I'll wrap it up. Uh, all stay safe, stay well, and see you soon. Thank you.